friends we are back to our conversation with subra and we are going to start with a very interesting topic making sense of small caps what really happened let's now talk to subra subra welcome back pleasure talking to you Thanks. so let's start by discussing what really went on in small caps in these past 3 years what is your sense i'll start with your sense largely there is a huge community which thinks that if you are an advisor or you are uh, listening to some uh, influencer you think that all the value add is going to happen only in small cap and mid cap so you can take some historic data over 20 years and say you will get an extra 1% or 2% this may sound small but over 20 years this is huge so there is a uh, every newcomer who comes in is told that large cap is uh, dull and boring nothing great is going to happen everybody knows the hdfc bank and sbi story you are going to find value in uh, equitas or uh, any of the newer companies uh, which are there which are small cap to mid cap so everybody concentrates on that and uh, as usual when it goes up a little more money comes which should be uh, which should be contrarian to what we think but actually when the market goes up the risk increases but people look at last one year return or two years return and say oh this is fantastic even last quarterly return and unfortunately when you do cagr and you have last one year return something like 40% then what happens is your three year return five year return everything gets uh, warped by this one year return so everybody think oh small cap is giving me so much so let me put more money so out of the 15000 crore sip book a big portion comes into small cap so small cap you have lesser number of companies in which people can invest and more money is chasing and what happens when uh, there is lesser supply and there is more demand price goes up that's all but there is another point which has been made out by a lot of people that doing sip in small cap is not risky at any time I any thoughts know. i don't know i don't know i think we have to get some of the basics right equity is risky this does not change whether you come in lump sum or whether you come as sip equity is risky so equity is risky you have to drill it into your head and taking 10 year 20 year 30 year views is very easy but you do not know how you will be after 3 years or 5 years maybe a 10 year view may be right but what happens if your own cash flow is not willing to support that what happens if you need money after 3 years 5 years will you be able to pull money out i think the risk reduces a bit the standard deviation goes down a bit but risk can never be eliminated in equity i mean uh, tigers are wild animals that doesn't go away you are sitting in a jeep you are hoping it will not attack you that's all it is not to say it's it's a domesticated animal because it is seeing 100 jeeps a day it is still a wild animal you have to be scared equity is risky it is not meant for the person who cannot take a high standard deviation but the problem that i have seen in the last two years is that on the one side valuations collapsed because of uh, geo political or whatever geo social or geo economic event however you call covid right an event a global event and uh, the way we responded to that event was quite extraordinary in the sense that first we stopped all econo- most of the economic activity except consumption because you have to live and then we restarted all the economic activity this stoppage and restart created a lot of supply side issues in several industries uh, some industries started in some geographies did not start in other geographies this created a advantage for geographies where it restarted because the people were able to charge more for their products get a higher margin and stuff like that the market actually reacted to all of this by kind of assuming that these profits these valuations the super normal profits were for a longer duration of time so the p ratio expanded from literally very low numbers to very very high numbers so what you are saying on the standard deviation has two dimension one side you went negative other side you went positive and this swing from extreme negative to extreme positive created a one year return in 2021 which is so high and based on this one year return 
capital flowed into small cap at a velocity which I have not seen in my investment experience. When capital flowed at this velocity into small caps, which is quite extraordinary, that further bumped up the return and again as you mentioned more capital flowed into this. The institutional response was to take the capital. Nobody said I am going to close my fund. Some people said I will stop the lump sum but I will take the SIP which is what I alluded to in my earlier question. So when this kind of a thing happens, you have one way buying that has happened for nearly 24 months. And this one way buying created NAV in the mutual fund, performance in the PMS, huge rise in the small gap index and a FOMO amongst the retail investors who are not part of the institutional investment framework. Those who are on the Zero Das and you know the various platforms, Grow, Upstock and various other individual investors who are literally small investors who want to on their own discover the joy of making the same returns which the index or these institutional guys have shown. So when you see that somebody is done, you also feel why can't I try my hand at this. It's a natural human tendency. So these guys came in last actually. I would say most of these guys have come in the last 12 months. And all this created a bigger wave of one way buying. Hardly anyone has really sold or booked profits. That's the sense I get. Now, when the markets cracked in the last few days, I don't think any of these players were thinking that this would happen in the way that it is unraveling. So, now everybody is unprepared. What I am sensing is that a lot of people have invested in this small cap thinking that let me buy and keep on buying till it goes up and when it starts falling down I will sell and get out and keep whatever profit I want to keep. How do you think this behavior will affect the behavior of those who are doing SIP and who want to believe in the 10 year small cap story? The guys who are going to do this trade out will be only 5-10% of the total investor community. But they have created a sell side. Earlier there was no sell side, literally only buy side going and grabbing whatever they could from Mr. Market. That was the two year thing. The third year retail also joined. Now we are seeing a sell side emerge from the opportunistic profit bookers. How do you think this opportunistic profit bookers will affect those who are the long term investors? See, one thing happened in April 2020. If you had done a survey, I don't think even 10% would have said we will recover in one year. Nobody expected, except the super uh, bullish, maybe we would have even called them foolish. Because when you spoke to pharma companies, they said uh, at least, uh, you know, two years to discover the vaccine and also nobody was talking of less than 1000 days for a recovery. The market recovered in 90 to 120 days, none of us expected huge flows. If you see the account opening in uh, the zero das uh, of the world, tremendous amount of accounts were opened. So many new SIPs were started and the SIP industry or the mutual fund industry had a theory that when the market goes down, you should put more money. Now, one category income stopped, right? Completely stopped because companies were laying off, etc. But for a big amount of the rich, the income didn't stop. Absolutely. Income actually may have gone up. Right? So, they started pumping in money and the market recovered. Maybe in April, you thought the market will go down. By September, October, it was hitting all-time highs. Nobody expected this. Anybody who has been in the market, Sham, from 2003 has not seen a long fall. So, now also when this fall happens, there people will come in with a frenzy till it falls further, then they may panic. But the industry is going to say, look at our history, last four years, if you have done an SIP without worrying, even if you take April to September 2020, you wouldn't have lost money if you had not stopped your SIP. That theory will sell till the market really crashes, if the market crashes. So I think people will put money, they will get hurt, yes. 
some people will sell because they will want to book profits but they will come back as an sgp i don't think will they will sell and take the money and go to a large cap or to a liquid fund that they will not do they will say oh 10% fall it's over now let me come back so you are think smart cap investing for those who have tasted huge success in the last 2 3 years is here to stay it is here to stay because a small portion of our population is investing and every bank which opens new branches goes and sells sip so yes some people may say oh let me put into a balance advantage fund or things like that but largely what is sold is mid cap and small cap some direct investors may go and put in large cap and all but large cap is never pitched because say oh large cap you can put in an index small cap you put into this fund mid cap you put into this fund i don't think those people will disappear because the industry will again say this keep putting for 5 years keep putting for 10 years and people will keep coming i don't think the impact on the sip investor is going to be huge i am seeing a lot of uh, investors panic in the past 7 8 days uh, but i must say the previous 60 days i saw investors panicking to buy correct <laughs> it's fomo both, both sides uh, both sides i am seeing the swing very sharply and uh, maybe as you are saying that again they may sell and then again when the market falls they may panic to buy also so overall it's uh, bouts of panic on both sides that i am seeing uh, and i feel that one should not be much affected by this you should be very small specific uh, being a small cap investor for a very long duration of time most of my experience is in that space i get the feeling that the mental preparation that is needed for the next 2 3 years uh, to be a small cap investor is of a much higher order i feel that you should be uh, far more patient yes far more uh, gradual far, far less more expecting. far less expecting far more incremental you should not put all your money in one day like i have been telling you how one should place orders we've been discussing this last one day and slowly you buy if you want to buy a stock at uh, 45 average you start at 50 and buy to 40 True. you don't start at uh, 45 because the time it gives you from 45 to 40 and back to 45 will be very little to buy the quantity you want to buy and if you are a institutional investor or a pms where you have to deploy in each stock 25 to 50 crores then i don't think that the traditional method of buying from another seller bulk seller is going to work now uh, for the simple reason that everybody knows the value of what they are owning this is a well discovered market and it's a more efficient market today than it ever was so the only inefficiency in this market comes from the panicking investor it's not coming from the large investor it can't come from the large investor but it used to 5 10 years back correct maybe 10 years back it used to 5 years back it used to in certain pockets now i see less of that panic in the institutional investor unless he is having redemption today i think that support or the balance between a selling investor and a buying investor is keeping these institutional guys quite comfortable somebody goes out two people come in so overall this is a market where uh, one has to be much slower much more persistent and uh, much less reactive true so in that sense one gets a feeling that di- despite all the events which have happened in the last 3 years some of which we are critical about the market is maturing constantly and the investor is maturing constantly and the institutional uh, system is uh, getting a clientele which is more mature which is learning right so the ins- while people think that pms mutual fund aif whatever index investors are all those who are taking the support of a manager and thereby they are not strong actually they are the stronger ones today the way i am looking at it now i am going to ask you a question about the weaker ones in this market nine crore accounts have been opened and out of the nine crore accounts demat accounts six crore have money less than 10000 this is a statistic i picked up from a finfluencers twitter handle this is not data i have collated i just saw it on twitter the person has a few lakhs following and i have been seeing his opinion so i assume that he is right so if 6 crore accounts have less than uh, 10000 rupees in their demat account worth of shares in their demat account i wonder how these kind of investors are going to make informed or calculated decisions 
in the space like small cap which they so aspire to invest. It's fair to assume a lot of their money will be in small cap, right? And I have been an investor like that before. Maybe not 10,000, maybe I had smaller amount. Maybe you had 10,000 30 years ago. So in today's world. Yeah, in today's world. So, yeah. so the point is that I have seen that it's very easy to make mistakes when you have less money also. But people want that experience of making those mistakes, thinking that they will learn to become uh, better investors. I am sure some of these 6 crore will become. But it is fairly uh, simple to generalize that most of them will have an underwhelming experience, an experience which is not a happy one. Why do you think we have actually pushed so many people into doing something on their own without adequate preparation? Because we have a far more robust, resilient system today. We have good regulation, we have good management. By and large, the system is far more resilient today than it was 10 years back. Yet, why have these 6 crore people not thought of becoming investors within the formal system of fund management or index investing or, you know, why have they chosen to go into... No, I think it is... Uh, uh, first of all, I think we are not making enough distinction between investors and traders. These are the gaming experience people. So, they want to get in in the morning, do something and have the thrill of action. With 10,000? With 10,000, because that's what he can afford. He is doing it without money also when he is playing video games, right? There is no money, but he is still playing video games. For them, this is more a video game. They don't even know the name of the company. They pick it up from somewhere, they buy and they, they make 1 rupee, 2 rupees, whatever. How will small cap be affected by these guys? Small cap investing be affected by these guys? I don't think it will have great impact because they will not buy one share, right? It's not, the worry is, uh, first of all, I think investing is a solitary game. You have to do your investing, I have to do my investing. We can talk and all that, but we can't copy each other. Now, I give this example of group study. When you are not at all prepared, you call up and I say, I am also not prepared. Then we all sit in one house, we drink coffee, we do all that, but we still don't study. We feel secure. Uh, he is also not studied, I have also not studied. So, you put the 6 crore in the group study concept? Yes. yes, group study concept. They don't know what to do. They get in with another person who doesn't know what to do and they say, we will do some joint investment. You buy this, I buy this. If we both do well, we will share it half-half. These kind of games people are playing. And people are enjoying the experience of execution is so fast. Once upon a time, you have to call the broker. He would say, oh, he's gone into the ring. Today, if you can do it online, it is fun. So, end of the day, if he makes 40 rupees, 50 rupees, he's happy doing that. So, I mean, I call them voluntary contributors to the broker welfare fund. That's what they are. They are... You think they are investors, they are not. Even the regulator calls them investors, they are not. They are traders. Also, they have been told that you are paying cost to the manager, whether it is a AMC or yeah. a distributor or whoever. Yeah. But uh, in a market like this, in one day, they will lose 3%. No, but tell me one thing. Annually, if I have to pay 1%, one, 1.5%, one Okay, for the competence of a, or the supervision uh, of a Naren or a Prashant Jain or an Anand Radhakrishnan, he said too much. Why would I not pay? He is protecting me. I have to see it as a protection come growth, not just growth. Just growth maybe I can also do, but I don't know how to protect my portfolio. I do not do portfolio sizing. If you think an IFA is only there to pick up the fund, it's wrong. He's there to do your portfolio sizing, analysis and all that. Therefore, a fund manager, therefore a fund rather than an individual stock for these people. But this gaming experience is, is a big problem. So, if you see how easy it is to execute on these new platforms, people are having fun. Incidentally, if they make money, great. I have been advocating booking profits in small cap, taking money out through SWP. I think you have also been saying this. Naren has been saying this. Uh, mainly to caution people that, hey, you have had a great time. Uh, you have done well also. Protect some of it so that you can again repeat the same thing by starting somewhere lower, maybe at the bottom or closer to it. Not been well received, I must say. Now, it's come down. Now, the same people come and say, ha, you told me, uh, but, uh, you know, all others were telling like this, this person was telling like this, this influencer was saying like this, this Twitter handle was saying never sell. 
and then they'll say that Warren Buffett has said this. Lot of defense mechanisms are going to come out. But tell me that if somebody has missed till now to take their money to safety, what are your thoughts on what they should do even now? Uh, if you have been doing an SIP in small cap since say 2020 or something you started, you can see your uh, IRR there. Uh, and if you see it at 34 percent, let's say I was just seeing in the morning and my in one of my funds it is at 34 percent. It's a fantastic time to get out. Don't think you're two days late. <laughs> Maybe you're 28 days early. So I have a very simple theory. If you want to panic, panic fast. Don't wait for the last day to panic. That's the worst time to panic. So panic now, it's okay. But don't do an SWP, remove a lump sum. So if you have 5 lakh, 50,000 lying there, remove 2 lakhs and take it to safety. How to take it to safety? You put it into a balance advantage, liquid or a multi, multi asset okay. somewhere. You take it to safety and then continue your SIP. Don't stop your SIP. But taking something out when the return is 34%, when your expectation is 11 or 12, you get it two times that or more than two and two and a half times that return. Isn't that fantastic? Which world are you living? Incrementally, you're not going to get 34%. This 34% is because your starting point was very low Correct. and the PE has gone up and the EPS has gone up. Now the PE from 10, let's say the PE has gone to 22 or something like that. It is not going to go from 22 to 42. So the PE expansion in your return is gone. It's over. Maybe it can come down. The EPS growth has to happen. So then quarterly look at the results. If it is not happening, continue your SIP, but at least remove a lump sum. Is that uh, in markets like this, uh, liquidity is the king. Investor who has the liquidity is the king. So having liquidity is probably far bigger strength than having notional gains. So that is one point which small cap investors can remember today and uh, success is also meant to be protected and preserved in the most effective way possible because it's not possible to be perfectly ideal but given that there is room for imperfections accept it and still do what you need to do for your portfolio. These are some of the thoughts that came to me based on what an investor should have done has failed to do and what he can still do before it is too late. See, there is one more thing. I know some of the small cap uh, fund managers. They are extremely, really brilliant and they know that they will have a liquidity problem. So they are very careful that they wouldn't put more than 3% in one company over you know, 70, 80, 90 companies even when they go to 27,000 crores and 30,000 crores. Now they, now they are 45,000 crores, 42. Yeah, so they are, so they are managing it very well. And they also know that when panic hits the market, they will not be able to liquidate some of the stuff that they have. That is liquidity problem for the fund manager also can come. So if there is a redemption pressure, you will take a hit in the NAV. So you have to be ready for that because today you are seeing 34 percent then suddenly you will see 29 and you may panic. It's 29 is not bad. But you will panic because you have seen 34. That anchoring will happen so you will panic, you will get out. So therefore 29 will become 27 for somebody else. That guy will panic. You have to be ready for all that. So when you say that you can do an SIP over the next 3-4 years, you should have the equanimity to be able to sit and say I know my expectation is 12, this is 2x my return, if it comes down to 18, I will still not panic. If you have that ability, you can continue. But ask yourself, do you have that ability to sit tight when everybody is panicking? If somebody starts panicking after a month or two, will you then sit tight or will you panic? If you are going to panic, panic today, don't wait. So we have made sense of what one should have done, what one should do before it is too late in small caps making sense of past events is very very important because we should understand what we did what we failed to do and what we should have done in the next video we are going to discuss how we should view this space over the next three years so the past three years we have discussed in this video in the next video we'll discuss the next three and what we can expect what are the surprises uh, which uh, will come our way so that we can be better prepared to face those surprises better prepared to respond to them, better prepared to participate in small cap investing as a genre and also 
to expect correctly from small caps. I don't think what we have seen in the three years is going to play out exactly in the next three. It could be a very different phase. So let's prepare ourselves better for that phase and the next video will delve into the future. Thank you for watching this video. Do watch the next video also on small caps. Thank you, Subra. Thank you.